What's up, guys? It's so my brother, the Dodge Slayer. I'm really gaming. Uh, sit back, relax. We are back in Final Fantasy 14. Get you something to drink, get you something to eat. If you haven't, pause it, do it now. Because we're going in for some more. We have made it to Ilmeg. I've got me something to eat, got me something to drink. Let's kick it together for a while, about an hour or so. Alright, so we... We did all of the quests that they wanted us to do for now. The, you know, they were being uh, real tricky with us, so... We dealt with that. Now we just gotta go and... See what Thankred's got for us now. Thankred! Thankred. Just like how you feel. <laughs> how goes it, Armin? So, a mix of menial tasks and pranks. That pretty much sums up my own experience. They have no troubles worth the, worthy of the name. How long are we supposed to keep at this? They're clearly playing with us. Indeed. Whenever I require as to how much more there is to be done, the answer is uh, ever the same. A little. I doubt they have any intention of releasing us in the near future. Ariane once told me a story about the Pixies. They are born from the souls of those who died as children, or so it's believed. Though they don't have memories of their previous lives, the desire to have fun remains imprinted on their souls. And so they live only to play, keeping hapless morals for their pleasure for years on end, sometimes even until death. In the past, even I sought to identify the true nature of ghosts. I came upon, I came upon literature examining a, a similar subject. The soul was likened to a core that resides in the aether, and its presence is what differentiates us from such beings as sprites and arcane entities. Upon death, said core ordinarily dissipates alongside the aether that composed the flesh. However, it may be held together and bound to the corporeal realm, either by the will of its own or by certain arts. Certain arts. In time, the soul may regather aether unto itself to assume another form, or find newly emerged life in which to abide. The Pixies may be one such instance of this. If ghosts are merely souls without bodies, what does that make us? I think you become that which you fear most, brother dearest. However the Pixies may have come into being, if we leave them to judge when, when they are satisfied, they will never be satisfied. Nay, we must negotiate new terms with the creatures, but where to begin? It seems we it seems to me we would need to at least we need at least one among them to sympathize with us. In the course of your chores, did you encounter a pixie who seemed even faintly amenable to reason? Feoul. You knew a pixie before? From before? Not only are you acquainted, but you entered into a pact? You might have mentioned this sooner. At any rate, I dare to hope this will offer us a way out. Without any further delay, then summon this Feoul, if you please.
in the chat in chat mode and say use your keyboard or a software keyboard to enter Beul to summon your pixie friend at the designed lo designated location. All right. Let's go summon Feiwu. All right. Let's do this. No. No, I did not want to do that. We want to do F E O U W L. Right? Too far away. Where? Where? Oh! Voice rings out in your mind. My sapling has finally remembered about his lovely branch. But with such a half-hearted call, he may as well lock me off and cast me aside. I have no sapling. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, now they tripping. That's your idea of a fervent call? A sodden log could do it with more with more fire. What the fuck? So stupid. It's so stupid. Oh loveliest. Oh loveliest. I said oh loveliest of oh shoot. I'm about to spell it exactly the way they have it out there. Oh, loveliest of branches. Please grant me your sucker. <laughs> it's so stupid. Summon me ever since you came here, waiting and waiting and waiting. But my sapling didn't so much as utter my name. Such a heartless thing he is. Cold and cruel and heartless. <laughs> Another self-important little brat. Just what we need. <laughs> Reminds me of my childhood. Oh, shit! All right, I'm sorry. It was a joke. Honestly, just a joke. <laughs> but just now you called for me so earnestly, so fervently. I couldn't possibly stay angry at you. Very well. As your lovely branch, I will lend you my strength. Enough for you to think of any new games, though, apparently. If I were you, 
I'd be bored of myself. Mad Bloom. Now let <coughs> me make something clear. That mortal is mine. No matter what you do, he will never be yours. Never, never, ever! Oh, not even a bit. But what about the others? Surely we can keep them. No, no, no! You can't keep them either! They're for my amusement and mine alone! And if you lay so much as a finger on my sapling, I'll scatter the contents of his bag all over your precious village. Oh, <laughs> scatter the contents of my bag all over your... Hey, 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 calm down, baby. Calm down, baby. You know I love you, but calm down. They'll be cold. Hard metal, furry, festering food, stinky, sweaty small clothes, and and all manner of other terrible, unmentionable things. How would you like that? Hmm? <laughs> all right, all right. But will you not at least let us play with the twins? Just while the others go and see Urion Jay? That's all we ask, and we promise we'll play nicely. <sighs> it seems we won't be joining you. Aye! <laughs> we'll reveal the hidden Fernick to you at once. Holy shit! Wow, all this was hiding in there. So this is the true Ilmeg. How are you feeling? Better. I think I remember the way now. Apologies for the delay. Shall we go and see Uriange? Your lovely branch is useful, yes? So whenever you're in trouble, you must remember to make use of me! Yo, she was pissed. She was pissed. <coughs> oh, man. Oh, that caught me off guard a little bit. I was like, yo, she was mad as hell. For how often I was like, say, sick, let it be quick. It would be a shame to return only to find that they had been made to play one too many games. <laughs> the place we seek is the abandoned manor of a nobleman and scholar. The booksman's shelves is called after the fellow's vast collection of tomes. An agreeable habitat for our, for our friend. I'm sure you'll agree. If you follow the path north, you should soon find the place. Come along. All right. Crystals here too. That's dope. There's crystals here. <clears throat> All right, let's jump on something real quick. Let's jump on. Granny.
what's crazy is that all these beautiful butterflies are all enemies. <sighs> crazy very interesting place though I'll give it that Long last, I give you R J. Your Orion J is humble abode. <clears throat> Come, let's see if he's home. <laughs> Better be home, but the hall is. Rianje, are you in? Unto a world weary of heroes, a hero wends his way. <coughs> the Exarch did send word that thou would seek me out, but ne'er did I imagine thou wouldst arrive so soon. Full glad am I to see thee once more, my friend, and none the worse for thy travails. Run along, Minfilia. We will meet you outside. Another one for you to imbue, if you'd be so kind. I take it thou hast met with our other comrades already? Hmm. That Master Alfino and Mistress Alize now travel in thy company is of great comfort to me. As for the rest, it beginneth in earnest. The hunting of the Light Wardens, and perforce the war with Yulmore. Hark thee then to my words, and through them behold the vision that I did glimpse, that of the Eighth Umbral Calamity. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. You heard about this. As I drifted hither to the first, traversing the boundary twixt reality and potentiality, I did bear witness to events yet to come. There I saw the combined forces of Eorzea and the Far East offering fierce resistance to the legions of Garlemald. So fierce, in fact, that they did begin to push the enemy back, ilm by painful ilm at first, then yalm by <coughs> yalm, and malm by malm in time. Yet the joy they felt was short-lived, for in so doing they did force the Empire's hand. Faced with defeat, the Garleans turned to a weapon most vile. Black Rose. Its potency defied all reckoning. Once released, the gas took on a life of its own, wreaking untold carnage not only in Eorzea, but in the provinces of the Empire besides. From fighters upon the front lines to babes in their beds, 
none were spared. And as the casualties became too numerous to count, so did the fabric of civilization begin to unravel. Nor did the land itself escape unscathed, <coughs> for spreading from the site of its release, Black Rose brought death to the very soil. To survive amidst the chaos and upheaval, men came to live by the sword, the rule of law giving way, inevitably, to the rule of might. Thus was the spark struck and the fire kindled, and swiftly did it spread as a blaze in a field of straw to engulf every corner of the world. Nations worthy of the name did then cease to exist, and those souls brave and true who might have risen to <coughs> restore order He's Tola, no! Sacred! He's Tola! <clears throat> Were no more. For the weapon spared not one. Not even thee. <clears throat> An endless age of war, begotten by the blight of Black Rose. Such is the legacy of the eighth umbral calamity which I did behold. Told me my own death, god damn. No matter the cost, we must forestall this tragedy. To that end, I have labored during my sojourn in this world, discovering in so doing the answer to a pressing mystery. That of Black Rose's inexplicable potency. Come. <clears throat> Dost thou recognize yonder chart? The elements fire, earth. So that's fire, lightning. The wind, water, ice, then earth. Yeah. Indeed. Tis a rendering of the elemental wheel, such as one might find in classrooms across the source. <clears throat> As the chart maketh plain, our world is composed of six elements, in addition to which there exist two poles in fundamental opposition. Astral, the active. Umbral, the passive. As a reflection of the source, the first naturally comprises the selfsame forces. Yet, curiously, there is a notable <coughs> divergence in their nomenclature. To be specific, the denizens of this world employ not the terms astral and umbral. Thus was I moved to inquire what names said forces had been assigned. A simple question which yielded a most unexpected answer. Upon demanding the name of the pole aligned with activity and growth, 
I was told that as life's myriad colors combined to produce black, the people of the first had called it <coughs> darkness. At this did my mind begin to race. Yet was only when I asked what name had been given to the pole aligned with passivity that mine eyes were opened to the truth. Peace and tranquility being as purest white unmarred by color, I was told it had been given the name of light. That's umbral light and astral darkness, yes? I'm no etherologist, but it strikes me that the nomenclature of the first is rooted in the generation of the two forces, while our own appears to focus on their effects, which makes one wonder. Have we had it backwards all this time? Tis indeed a compelling question, and one which beareth closer examination. Yet what knowledge we already possess sufficeth to explain the chain of events. The phenomenon of etheric thinning observed in the source is the consequence of light, the power of stasis flowing in from the first to stifle the movement of ether within the land. And according to Master Alfino, Black Rose slayeth by halting the circulation of ether within living beings. Should such a weapon be unleashed even as the first were rejoined, replete as it is with light, We would have a disaster of untold proportions on our hands. A calamity. Well, at least we have a better grasp of what we're facing. Our objective, however, remains unchanged. We are to eliminate the Light Warden of Ilneg. Speaking of which, were you able to ascertain its whereabouts? Aye. Tis all but certainly ensconced within Leergear, the castle which standeth in the midst of the lake. Oh, to enter, no. said Stronghold, we must needs turn to the Pixies for aid. Fortunately, I have become quite adept at courting their cooperation. Henceforth shall I accompany you, and do all in my power to ensure that my vision doth not come to pass. Well, we got Uriyanze back, boy. We got Uriyanze. You know what? We got the Uriyanze. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I can choose <clears throat> some food. I got food, so I can just choose to get a little piece there. <clears throat> My friend, I, ere I speak of the task at hand, there is a question I would pose to thee. What thinkest thou of my appearance? Did you take up astrology? Indeed. Though the night be lost, Behind the shroud of blinding light, doubt not, but that the stars shine still. I have chosen to avail myself of their guidance, that I might navigate the sea of uncertainty that stretches before us. For a blessing, my prior story and studies of astrology did provide me an adequate grounding in the art. But enough of myself, let us now speak of our task. As I did mention, if we are to enter Lagria, you would needs gain the Pixies' cooperation. This is a simple matter of presenting up to them a suitable gift. I shall procure us a selection of viands that shall please their palates. And pray assist me in this endeavor. Meanwhile, Armin, I bid thee obtain all, obtain, well, obtain that which will please their eyes. In these parts, there abideth a violkin known for its beautiful, beauteous wings. The Hawker. 
I shall lend thee a, a receptacle in which you may as capture the weakened specimen. All right, let's go. The exuberant pixies right there. Uh, need a hawker though. It's a killer bee. I know we saw a hawker around here somewhere. Oh, here we are. Hawker. Let's go. Uri Anjay, Uri Anjay, Uri Suave, suave Uri Anjay, thou art returned. Where art thou, where art, where art thou able to capture a hawk? Ah, truly a magnificent set of wings. I shall treat them at once to make fast of their vibrant colors. Banquet too should return anon, upon which I will be should be ready to ready all the items for presentation. Pray pray take thine ease meanwhile. Tis done. The Pixies shall be well pleased with these gifts. Ah, lest I forget. White Orosite, newly forged for thy use. Our mission being to thwart a rejoining we will most assuredly cross paths with those who crave the contrary, our eternal enemies. Thus did I choose to abide in this ether-rich land, the better to fashion a trap for the Asian's essence. May I come in now? You may indeed, assuming you've finished. I did as you asked. That's my girl, thank you. I should probably explain. Though my body remained behind in the source, its limitations saw fit to accompany me. Which is to say, I cannot manipulate ether. I took up the gun blade for its defensive advantages, but on account of my little impairment, I cannot imbue the ammunition myself. Luckily for me, Minfilia has quite a talent for it. Minfilia. Once we set forth, we are not like to return for some while. If thou wouldst choose tomes to take with thee, 
Let it be now. Really? May I? Of course, my dear. Yet have care thou dost not add overmuch to thy burden, lest I incur Thancred's ire. Hast thou spoken to him of thine encounter with the Minfilia of Eld? Well, I suppose now is as good a time as any. As you know, I freed young Minfilia from captivity in Yulmor some three years past. Not long after, the two of us journeyed to the south of Armoreng. To the edge of the empty, where the flood was halted. It was there that she awakened. The Minfilia of old. My Minfilia. What must I do to bring you back? My dearest Thancred, as I am now, I am no different from an Assian. This child is but a vessel. One of many I have used that I might spread word of her enduring blessing and preserve the flame of hope. In my name, each has died, never having lived her own life. I have taken enough from these children. I will take no more. But what of your suffering, your sacrifice? This isn't fair! I will not stand for it. I cannot. There must be something we can do. Tell me! Should the day come when this child grows weary of fighting and wishes to cast it all aside, then shall I take up her burden. But should she wish instead to become the master of her own destiny, Then shall I bequeath to her my all. Imbued with the strength that I reserve for rebirth, she may come to wield my powers as her own. And what of my wishes? What of Flamines? What of all the people who love and care for you and want nothing more than to see you again? It is not their decision to make. It is hers. This child's. This Minfilia's. You have ever watched over me, Thancred. that you do the same for her. Protect her. Teach her. Stand by her as you stood by me. There is much and more she does not know. She needs a guide to show her the ways of the world, or she will never find her own path. When the time comes, 
you will find me here. Until that day. Minfilia, wait! What? What happened? And then she was gone. Minfilia, the girl, claims to have no recollection of any of it. I have told her many things. Where we came from, what we fight for. But of that day, I have not spoken. How do you want this to end? With the coming of another possessed of the blessing of light, the first hath begun to rise up in defiance of its fate. The question remaineth, however, who shall take up the flame of hope which Minfilia hath borne for so long? Whether we will it or no, the choice must soon be made. I'm sorry I took so long. It was so hard to choose. In the end, I settled on just the one. That is well. Now, if all is in order, let us set forth for Lida Loran. Baker's like shit. He having to deal with his his old girl being gone. All right, let's deal. Claudia. So I'm guessing that big ass place right there is where we gotta go next. To stop this this next big boss. Oh no.
expect them to be going back so soon. We are scarce to be gone playing with the twins. That said, your gifts are truly wonderful. Let me tell you, the milk and honey and biscuits won't last a day, and the wings are the loveliest you've ever seen. You've done us a great kindness, and it's very custom to return the gesture. If you desire anything of us, you need but name it. Alright, it's been about 40 minutes, guys. We're going to go ahead and end it here. I'm really the God Slayer. I'm really gaming. In the next one, you might have to go in there and go in that place right there you see back there. Yeah. Yeah. Tia's light warden was what? A map.